guys, I'm Amy and I'm your nonfiction feminist. Today I'm talking bookshelves, DIY bookshelves, bookshelf ideas, how I organize my bookshelf, general bookshelf stuff. It's gonna be awesome. My husband and I moved around quite a bit from year to year whenever we first got together until last summer, really, when we finally settled down here. And whenever we were in college, I did have one or two book. well, I had a bookshelf and he had a bookshelf where we kept a lot of our books organized. And once we moved to our current town, I had gotten rid of both of those bookshelves so that we wouldn't have to move as much furniture. So I had cardboard boxes, and this ended up actually being a really nice way to organize my books since I was moving around so much. Wouldn't have to worry about furniture, just used what I had. So I took each of the books out of the boxes that I'd had them in for moving, I tucked in the flaps, and I stacked them on top of each other. Similar to this photo, except in this photo there are binder clips, which is not something I thought about doing, but probably would have made my cardboard bookshelves a lot more stable. You can get cardboard boxes in different sizes for your different sizes of books, stack them on top of each other. They're really cheap. You can pick them up even at a store. Say, hey, can you save all your cardboard boxes for me and go and pick them up whenever they're done, like, unloading their inventory and stuff. It's awesome. Cardboard boxes are super easy. You can also use milk crates. I'm not sure where everyone gets milk crates, but I know you can get them around. They're going to be a lot more sturdy than cardboard boxes. You can stack them up and paint them. Similarly, you could also paint or paper or whatever the cardboard boxes make it look pretty. And it just, it makes moving around a little easier. You're not worrying about furniture. You can stack these things very easily, take them down. Now that we are at our current house, um, I had actually made this bookshelf a couple of summers ago when we were living at our initial apartment here in town. And then I made this just regular, like, one on top of the other bookshelf versus this kind of square shape. Um, and those were the two bookshelves that I had at the old apartment. I just made this bookshelf last weekend. I will have a video on all of that after this discussion. One last idea that I have on bookshelves is something that I see a lot of people doing, where you take wooden boards and you can use either bricks or cement blocks and stack those up on the ends put the wood board on top, stack up some more blocks, put the wood on the top, and there you have your own quick homemade shelving unit. These crates are actually initially from Michael's. They're about 10 bucks a piece, and they are a lighter color, as you'll see in the following footage that I have. I decided to go with the darker stained wood. I like the darker colors. That is kind of it for my quick little budget bookshelves discussion. Now we are ready to roll the footage on how I made these shelves. Hey everybody, I'm getting all set up here to start making my bookshelf. I'm gonna walk you through the items that I have really quick. This is a $10 crate from Michaels. It's open at the top, you can face it in either direction whenever you're ready to put it together to put your books in. We've got a hand sander here from Black & Decker. It was about $25 at the hardware store. I have 80 sandpaper, 120 and 220. I'm gonna start off with the 80, go to the 120, and go over it a third time with the 220 to make it soft. You just fit it on the bottom here. It doesn't initially have the holes, so you will put on the paper you press this in and pull it out, and it lifts up on one side for you to tuck in the ends there, and just pop it back in. You take the plate, you set it down, and you press, and that's going to make the nice little holes. Then you've got your little catcher for the sawdust. You're going to find the little kind of hook there, if I can get this right. Ah, there we go. Set that in. Make sure it's matching up on both sides. There we go. Alright, I'm plugging it in. You're going to see what this looks and sounds like. So you hold it by the top and press down. And you're going to be pressing down with your palm whenever you're using it.
All right, now I'm getting ready to pre-treat some of these wood crates. I'm using the pre-stain wood conditioner. It was about 40 or $45 to get this off of Amazon. I got a lot of it because I make a lot of bookshelves. This is not required for the crates, but it does make the stain that I use a lot brighter. After you've let the pre-treater sit for about 5 to 10 minutes, then you add the stain. I have dark walnut. I could have left them the color they are without pre-treating, but I liked the idea of having a darker color for my crates.
welcome back to my library. I hope you enjoyed that quick kind of walk through how to. Once you have stained the bookshelves, you will take a cloth and do a lot of scrubbing to get off the extra stain because if you don't, the stain will stick to your books or whatever items you choose to put in there and it's not easy to get stain off books. I actually haven't found a way to do it yet. <laughs> Some of my books got a little bit of staining because I didn't quite get all of it. But yeah, just take an old cloth and scrub as hard as you can multiple times throughout the day if you have to. And then you will stack them on top of each other, either in the way that I have here, where I've got them one on top of the other, or you can do kind of the square that I have going on here. And I use both wood glue and nails. So I glue it down, I have clamps that I will show you in just a second here, and then I have little nails that I put in, and my husband also put some screws in my initial bookshelves. clamps. I have some that are like this. It's got this little nub in here that you push down to open it. And all you have to do is put it on, clamp down, make sure it's nice and tight, and it holds this position while you're nailing, screwing, or gluing your crates together. It's very important to have the clamps. It keeps them in place while the glue is settling or while you're nailing it so it's not going to move around or anything because that could make your project not as nice looking. So again we're just pushing a little nub here, it opens right up. Alright, next up I have this little guy, I don't know what you call it, but you can move this up and down here. Let's say you want to clamp it on like right about here leave this set and then use this part to twist to make it tighter and that's kind of what you do for this. Here is my classics shelf. I've got my Barnes & Noble classics kind of in color order. I have Penguin Modern Classics, Penguin Modern Classics, and just the regular Penguin Classics. Here's some more Barnes Noble, those are my hardcovers, general kind of paperback classics, my leather bounds, my vintagey looking stuff, and these are my art and music books, well, my husband's music books. We have the Stephen King shelf, and three Stephen King on that top shelf and some more like horror and thriller books. Up top is my To Be Read and a bunch of flowers and V.C. Andrews books. And here we have four shelves of nonfiction, memoirs, contemporary type stuff, and some poetry there. And that is my entire YA fantasy collection. Behind my old bookshelf here, I have my desk with some family photos and even more to be read books also in color order. As you could see from my quick little bookshelf tour, I do have several books that are organized by color, but by no means is that how I do all of my organization. My organization you can either see as very thorough or very chaotic. I guess it kind of depends on how you look at it. My classics are very much divided by edition because I have my Barnes & Noble, my Penguins, then you have kind of my general paperbacks. Uh, vintage -y looking hardcovers, my Barnes & Noble hardcovers. So it's organized both by edition and by type of book, whether it's hardcover or paperback. Color organization is kind of a last thought, and that also depends on the sizing of the books. So a lot of my paperbacks are together and a lot of my hardcovers are together because they come in very different sizes. My Stephen King shelf which you see right here. I have initially separated them by hardcover and paperback, except for these three paperback because this is the series shelf. You have the Mr. Mercedes series and the Dark Tower series, so I wanted to keep these books together. Generally speaking though, they are hardcover and paperback. After hardcover and paperback, they are then organized by publishing date, because we have a lot of Stephen King and publishing date just seemed like the best way to organize this. 
Then you have the nonfiction shelves, which for the most part are kind of size organized up here. This is more of the science nonfiction. This is more of a history nonfiction. These are memoir nonfiction, which I had a few enough, colorful enough, that I could go ahead and do a little bit of color organization here. So there is a method to the seeming chaos. There is my budget bookshelves and DIY discussion. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions on this process or on ideas, go ahead and leave a comment down below. As usual, please like, subscribe, and be my friend. Have an excellent day, find a good home for your books, and summer is a great time to do all this because it's nice outside. Get some sunshine, get some reading, it's gonna be awesome. Have a great one!